The next characteristic to discuss is pitch. The pitch of a murmur is most directly related to two factors. First, high pressure gradients tend to produce high pitched murmurs, for example, a VSD. Second, large volumes of blood flow across low pressure gradients tend to produce low pitched murmurs, such as in mitral stenosis. In the situation where there is both a high pressure gradient and a large volume of flow, high and low pitches are produced simultaneously. This will create a subjectively serious sounding murmur, which is frequently termed harsh. It most often occurs in the setting of moderate to severe aortic stenosis. Here's an example of a high pitched murmur. Here is a low pitched one. Finally, here is a murmur that many clinicians would describe as harsh. This brings us to the quality of the murmur. This is the most subjective and non-specific of the seven murmur characteristics presented here. It is essentially the difficult to describe timbre of the murmur. The murmur of mitral regurgitation is frequently described as blowing or musical. Mitral stenosis is rumbling. Aortic stenosis, as already discussed, is harsh. Aortic regurgitation is blowing. Stills murmur, which is a benign murmur typically heard only in children, is often described as musical or vibratory. Lastly, a PDA murmur, also usually heard only in children, is described as machine-like. The final murmur characteristic to discuss is the response of a murmur's intensity to specific simple physiologic maneuvers. I will briefly go through six. The one that I find most often helpful is asking the patient to clench their fists. Fist clenching increases afterload. This will allow the examiner to distinguish between mitral regurgitation, which should increase in intensity, and aortic stenosis, which will either decrease in intensity or be unchanged. Please be aware that the changes in intensity for both this maneuver and the others to come can be very, very subtle. Next, one can ask the patient to either squat or quickly assume a supine position. Either of these will increase venous return, which will also increase stroke volume. The consequence of this will be increased intensity of aortic stenosis versus decreased intensity for the murmur of hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. The inverse of this would require a Valsalva maneuver or abrupt standing, leading to decreased venous return and decreased stroke volume. The effect on the murmurs of aortic stenosis and hokum would be the opposite from the prior slide. Inspiration increases right ventricular preload and decreases left ventricular preload. Therefore, most right-sided murmurs will be increased in intensity, while most left-sided murmurs will decrease in intensity, with the exception of hokum. Expiration has the exact opposite effect. Be aware that listening for changes in murmur intensity with the phases of the respiratory cycle is extremely difficult and requires both substantial practice and an inherently good ear. Lastly, either clenching of the fists or squatting might help to bring out the murmur of aortic regurgitation. I'd like to spend just a minute mentioning two terms related to murmurs that I think are best avoided. First is the term ejection murmur. Technically, this refers specifically to a murmur produced by blood flowing th forward through the aortic or pulmonary valves during systole. Second is the term flow murmur. This refers specifically to a murmur produced by blood flowing forward through a morphologically normal valve. The reason I don't like these terms being used in the reporting of the physical exam is because they are non-objective in the sense that in order for the examiner to use them, he or she is already implying a diagnosis. Instead, reporting of the exam should be based on observations only. I find the term flow murmur to be particularly problematic and among the most misused of all medical terms. It is simply not possible to state that something is a flow murmur without an echocardiogram confirming the presence of normal valves. After this point, I'd like to go through six example cases, 
each with a one-line vignette accompanied by an audio clip. These will allow you to practice uh, applying everything that we've gone through up to this point. For the first case, we have a 60-year-old man with shortness of breath. This murmur is heard best at the apex and is without radiation. The first step in identifying a heart murmur is to assess the timing. This can be difficult when done without the benefit of feeling a patient's pulse, as in this exercise, but usually can be accomplished by remembering that systole is shorter than diastole, with the exception of particularly fast tachycardias. Let's listen again, specifically trying to identify whether the murmur is occurring in systole or diastole. I hope you'll agree that it is occurring during systole. Next, listen for the murmur shape. Is it uniform, crescendo, decrescendo, or just decrescendo? This is a uniform murmur, also known as holosystolic since it's occurring during systole. Listening for shape definitely requires practice, so don't be discouraged if you were unable to distinguish this right away. Finally, what is the murmur's pitch? This is kind of a trick because I don't think I would label it particularly high or low pitched, so I'm going to split the difference and call it medium. So now what we have is a medium pitched uniform systolic murmur occurring at the apex. What's the most likely diagnosis? Mitral regurgitation. Let's listen one more time. Example number two. An 80-year-old man presents with recurrent syncope. This murmur is heard best at the second right intercostal space. Let's go through the same set of questions as the last case. So first, what's the timing? Systolic. Now what's the shape? Crescendo decrescendo. Again, don't be alarmed if you find the shape difficult to identify when you're first starting out. Now what about the pitch? It's actually kind of hard to say what the pitch is, though for a different reason than with the last case. It has just a qualitatively unpleasant nature to it, which is usually labeled harsh. Therefore, which valvular disease is likely responsible for this murmur? Aortic stenosis. Let's listen once more. Example 3. A 55-year-old man has acute shortness of breath that develops four days after an MI. This is heard in the fourth right intercostal space. This time, I want you to listen for all three questions at once. That is timing, shape, and pitch. Okay, now what's the timing? Systolic. The shape is uniform. The pitch. I would also describe this as harsh. 
Let's listen again. So what cardiac pathology is this murmur due to, keeping in mind the clinical scenario? A possible ventricular septal defect caused by post-infarct septal rupture, or alternatively, acute mitral regurgitation caused by papillary muscle rupture. While the location of the murmur is slightly more consistent with the VSD, acute MR is probably statistically more common in this scenario. Also, Mitral regurgitation is more typically a non-harsh sounding murmur. However, in the setting of a papillary muscle rupture, the flow of blood is so great going backwards into the left atrium that that harsh uh, quality uh, can be generated by that. Here's the murmur once more.